What's up guys? Today I've got my hands on the brand new Dot One Mini PC. Now this is the first ever Snapdragon powered Mini PC that also features a 4G nano SIM slot along with 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, Ethernet and lots lots more. Now if you do appreciate my honesty in trying to save you guys your hard earned cash by telling you exactly what a product is like and whether it's worth buying, then hit that like button like you've never hit it before as a gesture that you guys do appreciate what I'm doing. It's super compact in size and it's running full Windows 11 professional and you have some pretty useful features which include dual display output and it's super silent in operation with a fanless design. Now, first of all, inside the box, you will find a user manual, an HDMI cable, a metal bracket and some screws so you can actually mount the mini PC on the back of your monitor. You're also getting a power supply and I will zoom in on the voltage for your information. And last but not least, the mini PC itself. Now this mini PC is made completely from a metal body and you can see the company logo on the top. Quick look at the ports, microphone, audio, USB 2, USB 2, USB 3 and a physical power button. On this side there is nothing and on the back we have our power socket, we've got two HDMI ports so it does support dual display output and the maximum resolution supported is 2K. We've got a 100 megabyte LAN and dual antennas and if we have a look there you can see 4G antenna and a separate Wi-Fi antenna. And if we keep going you can see we've got a 4G SIM slot so you can actually insert a SIM card for your data but you do also have your built-in Wi-Fi etc. There is also micro SD expansion that brings us back to the front and this is what the bottom of the mini PC looks like. Now we're just going to quickly run through the specs. So this mini PC is powered by the Snapdragon 7C which is an octa-core clocked at 1.8 gigahertz with a 2.4 gigahertz turbo. Now this specific model has 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gig eMMC storage and both the RAM and storage are not upgradable. Now we do have micro SD expansion and 4G SIM slot. This supports 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi AC with Bluetooth 5.0 and you've also got built in GPS. There is a 100 megabyte LAN. This does support USB 3 and this is running Windows 11 professional 64 bit licensed and ready to use. So without any further ado, I'm going to get this all hooked up and we're going to find out how good this mini PC really is. I'll be right back. So here we are booted up to the desktop. This is the full version of Windows 11 Pro and it comes with all the usual Windows apps you would expect to find, including the Windows App Store so you can download all your favorite apps and games. So this is basically a full PC experience in a mini compact size. The system is powerful enough to run all your regular Windows applications and also play quite a few games from the Windows Store, including Asphalt 9 and Modern Combat 5. Now let's check out the system properties. So as you can see, Windows 11 Professional with the Snapdragon 7C clocked at 2.4 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM, 64 bit OS, and it's already activated and ready to use. So next up system storage info, we have 256 gigs of internal storage from which 232 gigs are actually usable. So some of that storage gets used up for system OS and partitioning. Now I've just connected up my 128 gig SanDisk flash drive which contains all my 4K samples. So let's play some 4K video samples from a USB drive and see how it performs. So first up, high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo that's 160 megabits per second and by default it won't play as the compatible codecs are not pre-installed. So then I tried playing with the Windows Media Player and again same error for codecs. So then I installed the latest K-Lite codec pack for Windows 11 and tried opening up the Jellyfish demo and this time it actually played but it was not as smooth as I would have liked. But then I remembered this is not a 4K mini PC, it actually supports 2K max. So no point trying to play a high bitrate 4K Jellyfish demo when it only supports 2.5K. But nevertheless I included this part just to show you how it handles. So then I tried to play back a 1080p movie file and the video would not match the voices. So something quite wrong here, 1080p from USB also struggled. So far, not that good, but let's keep going. Time for some streaming and we're gonna start off with YouTube. 
So the first clip is the Costa Rica demo. 4K option is actually there, but it might struggle. I'm gonna test it anyway, and then we'll put it back down to 1080p. And as you can see, 4K streaming actually does work, although not as smooth and some frame drops are present. So I'm just gonna play a few more trailers in 1080p. Different. Wow. This is the man from Toronto. I'm so, wait, what? I'm the man from Toronto. And he's here to torture you. So next up, I loaded up Netflix from the web browser and I was able to stream a maximum of 1080p. And Amazon Prime Video does also support 1080p with HD. Disney Plus also supports 1080p, so that's 1080p streaming across the board. And I get Skywalker. So moving on to some gaming, and I did install GTA V through Steam. I left the graphics to their defaults, which I believe was 1080p very high. And whilst the game did load up, it was a pixelated laggy mess and ended up crashing every single time. So GTA V is not happening on this mini PC. All right, so quick Wi-Fi speed test. We achieved download speeds of 61 and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. And these are typically the top speeds we achieve in our office, although we do usually achieve a slightly higher upload speed of 18 megabits per second. So moving on to the benchmarks, we achieved a Geekbench single core score of 412 and multi-core score of 1067. And in the anti 2 benchmark test, we achieved 69K. And also this mini PC achieves a CPU pass mark score of 2878. So let's see how this compares to the other mini PCs of this year. So here is my top performing mini PC chart for 2022, allowing you to compare the specs, features and prices of all the most recent mini PCs. So as you can see, the dot one has taken position 14 on this chart with a pass mark score of 2878. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online and free of charge at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the Dot One Mini PC powered by an entry level Snapdragon 7C processor. Now I do like the design and build quality. You have a 4G SIM slot, micro SD expansion and a single USB 3 port. And also Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and activated. That is about all the good points this has. Throughout my tests, the mini PC was slow. It took long to install apps. Even opening and closing apps felt sluggish. This felt really underpowered. Do you guys remember the old Intel Atom netbooks? Well, think of it this way, performance is on that level. It absolutely struggled to multitask and you're getting only a hundred megabyte LAN. So who is this mini PC aimed at? Well, office and schoolwork can be handled. So general office applications and web browsing works, although apps do take long to open. So you would need to be a patient person, which most of us when it comes to technology are simply not. So nice idea, but end result and overall user experience is poor. I would basically give this one a miss. Um, it's better to pay a little bit extra and get something more powerful. Now, if you do appreciate my honesty, then hit that like button as a gesture that you guys do appreciate what I'm doing. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this one. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.